this is Mitch from Alternate Games. And um, so did you ha first have the location, then you wrote the story, or you wrote the story and had the location at the same time? Well, it's a little complicated because the location was originally um, part of uh, the house that we shot at. It was like a separate house um, because she was stuck in um, Sweden because of COVID. It was like she was shut down. She couldn't come back to her place. Um, so we're like, um, she gives us permission. We can shoot in there. But she came back the, um, when like the script was done. We were about to shoot. Um, and we couldn't use her um, detached house anymore, so we just decided to use the actual house um, below where Jericho lives. So it's like these little houses all, all in one. Can you share what part of town that location's in? Uh, it's near Universal City. Okay, so it is in the LA area. Yeah. Yeah. Is this, uh, is this story a personal experience, or is this something that you guys dreamed up? A little bit of both. I mean, uh, personal experience in that uh, it's meant to be an allegory about like grief and the five steps and stages that you go through uh, when you're recovering from grief. And uh, a little bit of dreamed up in that we wanted something that we could make a little creepy, a little, little sound design based, because I'm a big fan of sound design. So uh, we landed on walkie talkies mainly because of me, but uh, also because we wanted something that we could like get from a thrift store. Uh, that we hadn't really seen before. If that makes sense. Those, those walkie-talkies are, they take you back in time. I mean, to, they almost seem like they're military, you know, World War II or something type walkie-talkies. And the whole thing around switching the, to the different channels mm -hmm. and waiting, and it's just, oh man, it's, it's really good. It's so good. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. The walkie-talkies took some doing to find. Um, we, we went to several thrift stores, uh, just in our general area, Burbank and so forth, and didn't really find two that were great. We found, like, one, um, but I needed two because they needed to speak to each other, and I don't want to have to deal with camera tricks to have to, um, like, pretend that there were two. So I needed two. So eventually I went to eBay and got two from eBay. That, that was definitely the most expensive prop that I've ever had to buy. They look like it. They look like old new stock. They look so good. They look like they're brand new out of the store. They do. Like it, it, ta the, it takes the whole film back for me. Kind of takes you back in time. And it fits so well with, you know, this outlandish time that we're in, you know, COVID. Mm -hmm. And it just, it really captures this whole trip in the head, you know? Yeah. Kind of like, I don't know, you guys just hit it. You guys just got it so tight in that fits so well with what's happening for us right now. Sort of the, the zeitgeist of the time yeah, a little bit? Yeah, just a weird, like, what's real, what's not, how do you know what is? Right, and, and that's a little bit about, like, the ending in, in that when he's, like, looking off camera. It's about, like, how do you, once you are through acceptance, for your grief, for whatever it was, whether it's someone that died that you loved or some kind of breakup that you went through. I think as uh, even after the acceptance, you still have these moments in your life when you have like flashbacks of the grief and it can resurge. And that's what that look off, off screen is about. But him being stuck in the alternate, it's about uh, what is real and, and how do you get out and what how do you... Uh, sort of move on it really it really resonates I think with everybody because we've all been there we've all gone through that experience so all of us can see something about our lives in what's happening on screen I think dude that's important I'm, I'm really, glad that it, it really I really feel I really felt that watching it and wanting to watch it again Oh, great. Yeah, I think in re-watching it, I think you can find little things in the, uh, the instructions. Because like, that's something that I spent a lot of time in with like, creating them. Because I, I, I made them in Photoshop, like the instruction paper, and then like, aged them myself and made sure that we could get real close on the insert shots for what the text actually looks like. And we never really showed them long enough to just read completely on purpose. Um, and to read each line and, and to see what, what all is there, I think is a little, little nuggets of, of um, fandom, I guess.
So uh, how do we reach out to you or how do we find your film, you guys, out on social media? Sure. Um, my Instagram is Mitch Be Cool, which with underscores between the words. And uh, you can find the film on uh, Vimeo. Uh, and it should be uh, available to the public once the festival run is done. Well, it's a definite watch. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Michael Vasquez reporting from the Oceanside International Film Festival.